So, hello, everybody. My name is Jada McKenna, and I'm thrilled to moderate this session this morning. Welcome, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to this interactive panel of Unlocking Innovation to Transform Food Systems. For our viewers, I want to set the stage for this conversation before we go to our distinguished panelists. To feed almost 9.7 billion people by 2050 while meeting the sustainable development goals for a healthy and thriving planet and population, food systems will have to meet four aspirations. They will have to be sustainable to minimize negative environmental impacts, nutritious and healthy to access the promotion of diverse, nutritious, safe foods. They will have to be efficient to minimize loss and waste. Um, and finally, but most importantly, inclusive to ensure economic and social inclusion for all food systems actors, including the more than 500 million smallholder farmers around the world, which also includes indigenous people, women, and youth. Fundamentally, we need to change the relationship between food and climate change, biodiversity loss, high health costs, and poor nutrition to being a positive driver towards inclusive, sustainable, resilient, healthy, and nutritious food systems around the world. As we look to drive this global transformation of how food is produced and consumed, we at Mercy Corps and all of us here today believe that we can work together as government, agribusinesses, small farmers, and consumers of food to address these challenges together to have an impact at scale. Scientific and technological innovations, including the use of digital and data or new farming technologies, will help. But we need to move beyond specific technologies or initiatives to take an ecosystem view that encourages new consumption habits, gender inclusivity, prioritizes local systems, and creates a grassroots human-centered network to drive sustainable change. So today, we will hear from leaders working in the public and private sectors on their vision and how they inspire others to create this multi-sector innovation ecosystem and collective action that will support these key transitions towards healthier diets and more sustainable practices. It is my pleasure to introduce our distinguished panel. We have, we have um, the Honorable Achim Steiner, the Administrator of the United Nations Development Program. We have Honorable Minister Tomar, the Minister of Agriculture, Farmers' Welfare, Rural Development, and Panchayati Raj of India. We have Honorable Minister Teresa Cristina, the Minister of Agriculture of Brazil. And last but not least, we have Mr. Sven Torholsetter, the President and Chief Executive Officer of Yara International. Uh, because we are talking about this in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals, I'm going to start with, with you, Achim Steiner. Um, the UN Secretary General will host the Food Systems Summit in 2021 to be a People's and Solutions Summit. How can public, private, social sector, and other partners foster innovation to enable food systems to be equitable, build trust, and collaborate across silos um, to support this pivotal milestone towards achieving the 2030 Agenda? Thank you very much, and it's a, it's a pleasure to join you, and congratulations also to the World Economic Forum for still having managed to um, bring us together and the, the Davos Agenda 2021 in so many respects, speaks to the moment in time as much of um, to our, our desire to, to get beyond this moment. And I think when we talk about food systems, and I'm delighted to join this session which, um, with um, such a distinguished group of panelists, is perhaps emblematic for, for much of what um, we often are currently exploring with that notion of not going back to where we were before. What does building forward better mean? And um, how do we understand where the levers are for, for positive change? Now, food systems um, obviously are a very complex web. You've just um, described a few of the participants, and um, from time to time, the United Nations also tries to bring the world together to reflect on the overall nature of our food system in terms of uh, both that economy which produces that which keeps us alive, but also the implications of an agricultural economy that transcends very much the farming community. It uh, really reaches into the well-being of citizens. It um, has to do with land use. It has to do with climate change and with poverty reduction. 
So I think the first thing is to embrace this notion that food systems is much more than just looking at the food that is put on the table of people. It is that full cycle from the inputs that we require for our agricultural sector to produce the food we need with all the consequences that arise from land use, from uh, the use of chemicals, but also the um, need to continuously increase and enhance the efficiency. Now, very briefly, um, perhaps to unpick a little bit this notion of systems, because when we talk about systems, it sometimes becomes a very expert conversation and becomes difficult sometimes to unpack. And I would like to, in one sense, say, yes, it is a complex challenge to try and produce food for seven, eight, nine billion people and at the same time move on to a different um, platform of production, a different paradigm, also evolve the agricultural economy, because the balance sheet of agriculture's extraordinary um, expansion and its ability to feed 7 billion people today has come at a price. Um, it has come at a price, first of all, in ecological terms. We have a net loss of arable land happening in the world today, so as we need to grow more food, um, we're actually losing uh, the amount of land on which to grow that food. So clearly some significant decoupling needed here. Water consumption, chemical pollution, carbon emissions, these are all variables that will shape the future of the agricultural sector. And here again, a big plea to recognize that it's not just the large companies that um, shape this agricultural sector, this food sector. It is actually the millions and millions of small, medium-scale farmers, enterprises that are very much at the core roles of a future uh, food system. The consumption preferences, um, the social dimension, the awareness, the consciousness, uh, how markets will evolve, what they will be willing to pay for, which takes us really into that other domain, which is how sectoral policies and macro policies also create distorted markets. On the one hand, we want to uh, preserve the ability of farmers to be uh, livelihood generating opportunities. On the other hand, some of the subsidy policies we have in place for agriculture today are highly disruptive, highly distorting to markets, and therefore end up not producing an optimal agriculture economy, but actually often a very inefficient and ineffective one. Let me just highlight here a topic that has often been um, also discussed in our meetings in Davos, which is food loss and food waste. It is simply impossible to rationalize an agriculture economy, a global food system, that currently loses between 30 to 40 percent of everything we produce, either because we don't have appropriate storage connection to markets and it is lost between farmer and market, or we simply waste it and throw it away. This is an economic insanity, it is an ecological tragedy, and above all, it is something that should upset us all when we look at the fact that there is still close to a billion people who do not have enough food to eat on the planet. So these are some of the dysfunctionalities and the future of, of the way we move forward it has to do with systems, it has to do with innovation, with digital technology, but also with the way that people understand where food comes from and how their consumption footprint matters in the way that markets will evolve. And I think we have very exciting times happening around us, including through COVID-19, connecting farmers and producers to urban um, consumers through digital platforms who otherwise would not have been able to trade at this moment, just to mention one example. So I hope that lays out both the challenges, but also the enormous dynamism in this um, food system that we have in the world, in which nutrition, production, the relationship to uh, land and uh, the environment, as much as to eradicating hunger, are integral to the discussions that will also be at the center of the world of the food summit that the United Nations will be hosting later this year in September. And as you know, our food and agriculture organization, our what we call Rome-based agencies, are very much at the core of helping to bring the world together around these topics. Jada, back to you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for, for laying that out. And um, as, as you mentioned, these partnerships and, and looking at all aspects is critical. Minister Tomar, um, we know that breaking down silos and, and forging new partnerships is essential, as, as was just laid out, um, that we have to look across finance, energy, agriculture, water, environment. Um, can you talk about what you, what actions you were taking um, in India to build connections across agencies and mandates and departments to catalyze innovation and seek fresh solutions? Minister Tomar. 
Excuse me, can you just repeat that? Because the voice was lagging up very clearly. Minister, would you? Abhi, Abhi, okay. Can you talk about some of the efforts that you're taking in India to to make to work across silos and departments to, to forge partnerships? नमस्कार मुझे आप सबके बहुत इस दौरान वर्चुअल जुड़ते हुए बहुत प्रसन्नता है और आप सबके ध्यान में है कि भारत एक कृषि प्रधान देश है और हमारी अर्थव्यवस्था कृषि आधारित है और इसलिए स्वाभाविक रूप से कृषि को बढ़ावा देना भूमि की सुरक्षा और पर्यावरण को ध्यान में रखते हुए कृषि को सक्षम बनाने के भारत में अनेक उपाय किए जा रहे हैं जहां तक फूड सिस्टम का सवाल है तो उस दिशा में सतत विकास के लक्ष्यों को ध्यान में रखते हुए भारत सरकार अपने देश में सभी प्रकार की व्यवस्थाएं करने का प्रयत्न कर रही है हम हम लोग फूड सिक्योरिटी एक्ट लेकर आए और देश में लगभग इक्यासी करोड़ लोगों को खाद्यान्न की सुरक्षा मिले यह सुनिश्चित करने का प्रयास करते हैं जहां तक ग्रामीण क्षेत्र कमजोर वर्ग के लिए लोगों को पोषण की आवश्यकता है तो उसके लिए पोषण अभियान भी चलाया जा रहा है आंगनवाड़ी का जो हमारा बहुत ही सशक्त कार्यक्रम देश में है उसका लाभ भी आज इस क्षेत्र को मिल रहा है लेकिन साथ ही साथ पोषण से जुड़ी हुई फसलें उत्पादित हो सके इसके लिए कृषि अनुदान अनुसंधान परिषद लगातार नई नई किस्मों को ईजाद कर रही है और ये कोशिश कर रही है कि गरीब से गरीब आदमी को भी अच्छा पोषक खाद्यान्न और भोजन उपलब्ध हो सके इस दिशा में लगातार हमारा प्रयत्न है भूमि सुरक्षित रहे इसलिए प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड की परियोजना पर बल दिया है और इस योजना के अंतर्गत दो चरणों में लगभग 12-12 करोड़ किसानों को सॉइल हेल्थ कार्ड उपलब्ध कराने का प्रयास किया गया है और हमारी कोशिश है कि लोग सॉइल हेल्थ सिस्टम को स्वीकार करें और सॉइल हेल्थ की रिकमेंडेशन के अनुसार सिंचाई के लिए पानी फर्टिलाइजर और पेस्टिसाइड का उपयोग करें जिससे कि फसलों के उत्पादन के बाद कोई भी ऐसी परिस्थिति नहीं रहे जिसके कारण मानव को नुकसान हो सके जलवायु परिवर्तन की परिस्थिति के कारण भी भारत निश्चित रूप से चिंतित है और उस दिशा में हमारा प्रयत्न है कि जो भविष्य के संकेतक दिखाई दे रहे हैं उन संकेतकों को ध्यान में रखते हुए हम अपने यहाँ पूर्व से योजना बनाए उस पर काम करें जिससे कि आने वाले समय में इस संकट से निबटने में हम सक्षम हो सकें जहां तक 
कृषि के क्षेत्र का सवाल है तो कृषि के क्षेत्र में उत्पादन और उत्पादकता के लिए हम आर एन डी पर भी बल दे रहे हैं और हमारी कोशिश है कि फसल कटाई के बाद उसको प्रबंधित ठीक प्रकार से किया जा सके क्योंकि आज आप सब के ध्यान में है खाद्यान्न की दृष्टि से भारत अधिशेष राष्ट्र है बागवानी की दृष्टि से भी हम हम भरपूर उत्पादन कर रहे हैं लेकिन हमारे यहाँ निश्चित रूप से इस बात की कठिनाई है कि कई बार पर्याप्त अवसरचना नहीं होने के कारण फसल का नुकसान होता है और उसका असर पर्यावरण भी पड़ता है इससे निबट सके इसके लिए अवसरचना के लिए आत्मनिर्भर भारत के पैकेज में एक लाख करोड़ रुपए की व्यवस्था की गई है इसके माध्यम से हम दो संरचना बना सके कोल्ड स्टोरेज बना सके और कटाई के बाद कृषि उत्पाद का पर्याप्त मात्रा में प्रबंधन कर सके Minister, Honorable Minister Teresa Cristina. 
Um, today, the world is going through a new revolution, which is the, the revolution based on digital transformation. Um, can you talk to us about how Brazil has acted on the theme of digital agriculture, um, what we can expect from that in the coming years, and, and, and how Brazil positions, positions itself further in the, scenario, in the future scenario? I got you. I would like to congratulate everyone and our moderator that is with us, my colleague, the Ministry of Agriculture from India. Uh, and, and now the international uh, customers that we have here. The digital transformation had been ha been uh, carried around uh, very rapid in the agribusiness and uh, in the context in which we are insert inserted. The Ministry of Agriculture has uh, uh, guidelines very clear based on five axes, sustainability, uh, open innovation, bioeconomy. Uh, added value and uh, digital agriculture and now we this system of agro uh, farmer we have one of the main systems they are linked with the agro they're developing um, technologies in all the supply chains of our our business of agro business we have uh, institutions for research institutions companies uh, private in investors with all a sort of sector that are all over our country, Brazil. In the latest years, all the investments that we have have been scaling up. It went to four million of dollars to twenty to more than two hundred million dollars in twenty nineteen. So for the moment, we have more than agitex that we're working in the moment. For example, the certification protocol, the traceability, the blockchain, and all technologies that we will deliver a product that is more sustainable and safe for all the final consumers. For the next decade, it will be uh, marked by the convergence of the biological and the digital, mainly in the agro livestock market. All technologies of uh, what we have, there are very clear examples of this uh, process. And we also have the connectivity connectivity in our, in our space with a focus on the inclu inclusion that uh, we are including the small farmer. We have more than 4 million, 4.5 million of small farmers and this integration will make that young people will stay in the in the farm and they will not let the people to grow old in all the rural environment. And we're also helping women that work in the farms. In this context, we have uh, we have these programs that, that we call women farmers and women with a new view. And we're trying to give visibility for the women that work as farmers, the Afro-descendants, the indigenous, so they can we can give value for their contribution. Women nowadays, they have 20% of the rural properties and they should have the access to technology and it's essential for all the activities related to the national agriculture and livestock production. And we reinforce that innovation is essential to adapt the agro livestock market for the reality is the only vector that will be uh, able to put together the uh, preservation, the environment preservation, we are need, we are now needs. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Minister, for that. Um, I'll, I'll turn to Sven. You know, we've heard from the ministers about all the work that they're doing with smallholder farmers, um, with research institutions, with, with private sector companies. Um, Yara has, has long been um, really bold in, in reaching out and forging these partnerships, but I know it can also be um, intimidating. So can, can you um, talk to us about how 
um, your advice for, for other businesses in your, your space about how they can reconcile their business imperatives with climate concerns and, and how what kind of tips that you've learned on how to effectively partner um, and some of the benefits and rewards of that? Uh, your direct is uh, everyone, uh, we, we, we see, see the, um, here. here. And, 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 and I want to be very, very clear at the, uh, at the very beginning, beginning that all I want to do is this. Hello, hello. We have to work across the, the whole suit to the regulators, private sector, and, and uh, NGOs, and we all have to play our part. And we have to work with, with the farmer and, and then against, against the farmer. And then I, I see that they have um, Ishmael, Ishmael Songa, Songa uh, in this session as well. well. And uh, so, some years ago, he told me something that, that has become, become the North Star for me when it comes to the village. And um, what he said was that, was that uh, when, when we innovate in agriculture, do that, that to solve the needs of the smaller farmers farmer and not create, create additional needs. needs. Um, and the good news is, is that, that uh, the practices and, and the technologies, technologies are already um, out there. there. And, and um, in, order in order to, to make, make uh, farming, farming more sustainable, uh, we don't need any breakthroughs or, or, or many miracles. miracles. Uh, for me, it's, it's about, about uh, reaching, reaching uh, a smaller uh, farmers uh, and then uh, uh, collaboration is uh, also about reaching. Um, um, technology, technology is about knowledge, uh, or more specifically, the uh, use of knowledge. And, and that you must uh, be able to, to be available to, to everyone, everyone in, order in order to create even greater life. Um, and, and, and when we manage, we manage to, to make it uh, accessible to all, all then, then we can, we can make real change happen. Uh, and basically, and basically, to me, and, and, and we also heard, heard from uh, uh, Tomar, Tomar uh, well, well, it, it all comes, comes down, down to soil health. health. Uh, technology, technology can, can improve soil health, 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 and, and health healthy uh, soil, soil delivery, delivery is uh, better, better quality, increased increase farm 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 and, and not, not only it reduces the carbon footprint, but the, the opportunity, opportunity to, to capture carbon from, from, from the atmosphere, atmosphere as well. As well. And, 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 uh, India is a great, great example of the potential, uh, uh, very ambitious target for farming. Farm 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 uh, already a very, very uh, successful tech sector and uh, great, great social activity. activity. And, and in addition, in addition we have a large agriculture uh, sector as our direct impact economy as well. And, and it's quite, quite urging uh, uh, the, the elements of tech, tech economic connectivity, connectivity and farming, and farming that, that, that really can, can benefit. Each farmer and, farmer and the society as a whole. And it's exactly what we believe. We have uh, invested, invested heavily, heavily in, uh, in the Indian area. We are already seeing see a great results in the uh, island to grow uh, 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 our digital connectivity uh, 100 from just two years, from 50,000 to 5 million. And 3 million of these farmers are in, uh, in India. And I should also say that we're stepping up our efforts in, um, in, in, in Brazil as well, together with the, uh, the government. And, and also with farmers to, and we have established a tech hub in Sao Paulo, and we combine that with the uh, willingness of the Brazilian farmers to try new technologies, this can be really uh, impactful. So I can only encourage that we get really ambitious here. It, it is possible to reach um, 100 million farmers by year 2030, uh, uh, supporting them to, uh, to make this transition to regenerative uh, agriculture practices. Uh, back to you, Jenna. Thanks. Thank you so much. And um, I, I appreciate all the panelists. We, we, what we've heard today is ambition is possible. All of you are quite ambitious. Um, and I know in the next segment, um, we will hear from farmers and local entrepreneurs to, to, to kind of further bolster how they are feeding into this ambitious agenda and, and working together. So really excited about that. Um, so thank you all for your participation in this first half. Um, I'm at, we're invite forum members and partners um, through your top link viewer to stay on for a unique opportunity for an informal discussion and exchange on how further engagement and connections impact on the topic. We've also had a 
lot of wonderful um, questions and comments in the chat, and those will continue and, and be discussed in the next segment as well. So I encourage TopLink viewers um, to stay on the line. And, and for those of you who are not, thank you very much for joining us for this session. And I hope that it has inspired all of you to think about what your part could be um, in setting this ambitious agenda for, for innovation and, and creating an innovation ecosystem and, and not just relying on one-off things. Thank you.